Good afternoon. You know, the immortal declaration of the United States proclaims that all men are created equal. But the reality is, we are not born or created equal. You take a look around in this world, in your own communities, at your workplace, or even in this room today, you see inequality everywhere. Income, gender, ethnicity, color of your skin, race, religion, and the list goes on. The fact is that we are born into families, cultures, societies, countries that are fundamentally different from each other and that do not provide an equal playing field for everyone to compete. And this makes us unequal. But there's one factor that could make that playing field equal and even again, and that is called opportunity. You know, with the right opportunities and tools, the disadvantaged could lift themselves up and address their adversities to claim their due right to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, just as our forefathers envisioned. You know, opportunities come to one's life in two different ways. First, opportunities that are given to you by others. These are your parents, your teachers, your mentors, your friends, your family, or total strangers. Secondly, opportunities that you create for yourself. And these are your life events, your experiences, your lessons, and you convert them into opportunities for your own benefit. You know, my life has been shaped by a series of opportunities that came to me in both these ways. And ladies and gentlemen, today my goal is to share that story with you and how that led to what we do through Educate Lanka in providing those opportunities to others who were deprived of them because of their circumstances. You know, my life can be described in three parts. And first of it starts in Sri Lanka, where I was born and raised for the first 20 years of my life. My generation was unfortunate to be born into an ethnic conflict that lasted nearly three decades, including the first 20 years of my life. Death, terror, suicide bombing, all of these became normal, normality to us. You know, there were times that we went to school not knowing that we will return home alive or in one piece. You know, all of this led to a bleak outlook and a poor economy in Sri Lanka. You know, I was fortunate to have parents who were able to provide me one of the best educations that I could hope for by sending me to a, one of the best schools in Sri Lanka. And that was the first opportunity that I received in my life. But even with that, I didn't see a future for myself in Sri Lanka, and I wanted to leave the country. We had lost faith in our systems, in our rule of law, in our leaders, politicians. So at the age of 19, my parents were able to provide me that opportunity to come to the United States to, high, to pursue my higher education. And this leads to the second part of my story, which explains the next four to five years of my undergraduate studies in the US. You know, as a 19-year-old, I was full of happiness and excitement to come to the US. You know, my, simple, my goals are very simple, to get a good education, get a great job, earn a lot of money, and one day, perhaps, I will go back to Sri Lanka. But boy, was I in for a surprise. I'm sure a lot, of can, a lot of you can relate, but the US that I saw in Hollywood movies was not real. <laughs> On top of this, I was faced with many adversities and challenges within days of my arrival in the US, starting from my own people who were supposed to look after me, turning their back on me. I moved four different places during my first semester. I worked 50 jobs a week, 50 hours a week, working two jobs <laughs> while taking full-time credit. I remember skipping many meals as far as I remember just so that I can pay my rent and buy my books. And all of this led this 19-year-old me to buy a ticket and go back to Sri Lanka, but I didn't. 
I faced these challenges and I survived. But more importantly, I was able to turn these adversities into opportunities by gaining two valuable skills and values that I still carry with me. Being resilient and being determined. And I moved on to the second year of school despite the obstacles and continued challenges. And I was privileged enough to get an opportunity to be accepted into one of the business scholars program at the community college that I was at. And as part of this program, we were connected to a mentor. And my mentor, Brian, was a retired, successful business entrepreneur. And he had this program in inner city DC where he would go down every week, twice, to train inner city people. These are often ex-convicts and drug addicts about business skills so that they would have another chance and shot at life. And I joined the program. But two things didn't make sense to me at this time. You know, here I am in the mo capital of the most powerful nation in the world, and I'm seeing 35% poverty. Not much difference to what I saw back home in Colombo, in Sri Lanka. And secondly, here I am, a 19-year-old, going to inner city DC to train these strangers about business skills so that they would have an opportunity at life. You know, that experience left a lasting mark in my life. Then I moved on to University of Maryland to complete my degree, and I was in my final year. I was about to land in my dream job in finance. And something happened in 2004, December. The South Asian tsunami struck Sri Lanka and the rest of the countries, killing thousands and displacing millions of people. The community here was devastated, and we acted. The community went door to door to collect donations, but my roommate and I at that time decided we wanted to do something different, and we did. We raised a fund by crowdsourcing from the community in DC and bringing the youth Sri Lankans together for this. But two things stood out from this experience. One, my roommate at that time, Rashan, who's also here today, allowed me and encouraged me to lead this effort. You know, this is the first time in my life that someone had believed in me to lead something. He saw something in me that not even my parents had seen in me. And secondly, this initiative galvanized the Sri Lankan youth community together to give something back to Sri Lanka for most of them, for the first time in their lives. The initiative was a success and we moved on. I went to do my finance job, but something changed in my life because of the experience with the tsunami and with the inner city entrepreneurs. I no longer just wanted to earn money and have a great job. I also wanted to give something back and help other people. So the same group of us got together again and decided to do something more to give back to Sri Lanka. And this gave the idea and the birth for Educate Lanka. You know, the idea was simple. All we wanted to create was a platform so that people, Sri Lankans from anywhere in the world, could invest in the education of the next generation of leaders in Sri Lanka. We did create it. It got off to a great start. We had hundreds of students funded by sponsors from around the world. And then something happened in April of 2007. I met with a life-threatening car accident in Sri Lanka. You know, I was saved because of a bystander who took me to the hospital in time and to the miraculous hands of the surgeon. By the way, both of whom were from different religions and ethnicities than I spent the next three weeks in the ICU and an accident ward of a public hospital in Sri Lanka. And I saw the worst. If there were a living hell, I saw it. I saw people dying next to my beds. I saw patients coming in without their limbs. I saw blood splattered on the hospital floor. I saw helpless patients taking their last breaths next to my bed. And this made me realize and reflect back on my own life. 
strangely, what I started to reflect was not about the money that I've earned, or the but it was about my immediate family and friends, and more importantly, the people that I've been able to touch. Those inner city entrepreneurs, those victims of the tsunami, those students of Educate Lanka. And at that moment, I realized what matters in life is not what you accumulate, but what you leave behind. I came back to the US as a changed person. I had a different perspective of life. And soon I realized I didn't belong in finance. So I quit my job after five years, and I went to study social entrepreneurship and international development at the Fletcher School at Tufts in Boston. The next two years, I tested Educate Lanka through a series of business plan competitions in Boston, and I got exposed to mentors and advisors. I also got a chance to work at the World Bank and got, get exposed to the international development field. But still, I didn't know what I wanted to do after the two years, until that last class, when my professor asked this one question. What do we want our legacy to be? And at that moment, I decided I wanted to continue and do Educate Lanka full time. And here I am, three years later, the rest became history. I survived. I'm more passionate, more optimistic, and more importantly, happier. And ladies and gentlemen, that's my life and my story wrapped up in 10 minutes. And if my story is about receiving opportunities, then Educate Lanka's story is about giving those opportunities to others so that they too could dream of achieving their future goals. You know, education should be a fundamental human right, but it is not. Access to a quality education has become a luxury only a very few could afford. Even in universal education systems, such as Sri Lanka, going to school doesn't mean that you are educated anymore. You know, in Sri Lanka, poverty has become the number one reason for children to drop out of school and then on participation. You know, many people ask me this question. Why do kids in Sri Lanka need financial support or scholarships when the education is free? But what they don't realize or what, do, what they don't understand are all these costs that families have to pay out of pocket. And without these, your education is not the same. You cannot compete with the rest of them who have easy access to them if you cannot afford these. You know, in Sri Lanka, 140,000 students graduate every year without job-related skills. Now imagine for a second what that would do to an economy, to a country. There's something wrong in there. And to address these, we created Educate Lanka with two unique models, a global model that provides a technology platform so we could provide unin uninterrupted financial support and scholarships until these students graduate from college and higher education so that family poverty doesn't become a barrier for them to achieve the education they deserve. And we matched that with a local partnership model to provide the critical exposure to mentoring, guidance, skills, and connections to internships and op employment opportunities. And together, we wanted to create the next generation of empathic, and global, empathic leaders and global citizens from the disadvantaged backgrounds in Sri Lanka. You know, education is the most powerful weapon or the opportunity or the gift that you can give to someone. We've come a long way since our inception. We've given the opportunities to over 800 students, and over 300 of them have already graduated and have gotten employment. But our real impact is embedded in each of these 800 stories. And before I conclude today, I want to share two examples, two stories of our 800, out of the 800 stories that we have. One is about receiving an opportunity, and another is about missing an opportunity. This is Udayangani, one of our first students of Educate Lanka. She came to us when she was on 10th grade, when she couldn't afford the private tuition and other educational expenses for her to continue her education. And with our help, eight years later, she's now a junior studying languages 
and soon to be graduated as a linguist. She recently got a scholarship to go to China to study ma enhance her Mandarin skills. In 18 months, she will graduate and get, an em get employment and will be able to empower herself and her family out of the circumstances. You know, if that's a story about receiving an opportunity, this is Inoka's story of missing an opportunity. You know, Inoka is from the northern province of Sri Lanka. And when she came to us last year, she was 13 years old in eighth grade. All she wanted to do was become a teacher. She was an orphan because her single mother couldn't afford to support the four children, so she was given to a convent. But due to the competitive application process, we weren't able to provide, she didn't pass through our initial screening. But during my final review process, I read the application again. And I thought, maybe this is the one opportunity that she's looking for. So I approved her. A week later, I got a call from my country coordinator from Sri Lanka at three in the morning. And he said, Inoka has committed an apparent suicide. And at that moment, I started to think, what if, what if that she knew that she was selected as one of our scholars? What if she knew that there was someone who's believing in herself? I wouldn't know the answer to those, but I know one thing. I know that we failed to give her an opportunity when she needed it. You know, all of us have unique stories. Each of you have, has unique stories. But what matters is what we do with them. All of us have gotten opportunities from others, or we've created opportunities for ourselves. But do we use it for our own benefit, or do we give some of that back to other people? My life has been shaped by a series of opportunities that are given to me by other people, and I'm committed to give those back to others throughout the rest of my life to as many people as possible. Now imagine if you all do that. Because remember, what is important in life when we leave this planet is not what we take with us, but what we leave behind. And let's make sure that what we leave behind is remembered for the right reason. And if we do that collectively, perhaps one day, one day, we can hope that the immortal declaration of the United States become a reality again. And one day, we will all become equal and even again. Because talent is universal, but opportunity is not. Thank you.